Hey, John Morris here, and in this video we're going to talk about variables. And variables allow us to store information for use in PHP. So we're going to talk about how you construct them, how they work, and a little bit about what you can do with them. So first off, to start, the uh, let's talk about the syntax of defining a variable. So in order to define a variable, you would do something like this. And what we have here is we have the name of the variable that we're going to define, and then we have the value of that variable. And it's really just as simple as that when it comes to uh, defining a variable. Of course, you want to make sure that you have the semicolon at the beginning, and every variable when you define it always has a dollar sign at the beginning as well. If you don't have that dollar sign, uh, that variable will not be defined as a variable. Okay, so. Um, that's a little bit about the basic syntax. Now, what do we use this for? Well, if we come down below to some of the script that we we're working with here, we can actually take and we can define uh, this message as a variable. So let's say, let's call this message equals, and let's just take this <coughs> and put it into uh, a variable. Okay, so now you can see we have our dollar sign, we have our semicolon, we have our message defined in a variable. So now we could come down here and we can echo this variable. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. And it will do the same thing as if we had just uh, printed it out or echoed it out. So if we come over here and we refresh this, you can see we still have this high I'm a PHP script. And if we view the page source, uh, again, it looks just exactly the same. And so that allows us to, uh, to echo out this variable and we can set this variable to anything. Now, how is that useful? Well, there's a number of ways. Let's say, for example, you have um, a common, uh, a common uh, message or, or, or script or, or something that you want to uh, display on your website. You could simply save it as a variable. And now once it's saved as a variable, I can come down here and I can write this and if we come back to our page it'll go ahead and echo that out down here as well so it can be a time saver you can define a variable once and then you can use it in multiple spots throughout um, your your web page which is very useful and a lot of times that's how you're going to to use it for example you may use a uh, you may define a variable that has some sort of database information, let's say, for example. And in, uh, instead of having to constantly type in the username and password uh, for access to your database, you can simply save it as a variable. And then every time in your script that you want to access the database, then you can just use that variable instead of having to constantly retype it. So it can, uh, that's one way that, that you'll probably constantly use it, and, and that's one way you can. Uh, another way uh, is is you'll notice from before uh, with our form we have this f name uh, variable that we have that we created up here and <clears throat> this is information that we pulled from our form and this is the other big way that you're going to use variables and it's going to be um, using variables to store data where you don't know what the result is going to be so uh, if we come to our page over here, we have no idea what someone would enter in this form. They could enter anything, okay? But what we do have an idea is we kind of have an idea of what kind of information it might be. So, for example, in this particular page here, um, the, the text preceding it says it allows you to store user submit data into a database using a simple HTML form like this one called so we have a general idea that the information that's going to get entered here is going to be the name of uh, this HTML form. So we can enter that here, and now we can echo it out, even though we have no idea what's actually going to get entered there, because we stored the result of that user submitted data as a variable, 
and then we echoed out that variable. Okay, so it allows you to deal with um, abstract data. So, for example, you may have a form that is a registration form for your website that has first name, last name, email address, right? You don't know what their first name and last name and email address is going to be, but you do know that it's going to be their first name, email, um, last name, and email address. So you can store that data in the database and then pull it out and store it as a variable in your PHP script, and you can then... Um, echo that out wherever you want their name to be you would just use the variable f that you created for name and and the one that you created for email address and so on so it allows you again to deal with that in an abstract manner and a really good example of this is WordPress so why don't we go ahead and go in here to WordPress All right, now that we're inside WordPress, if we come to a post, you let's say go to this Hello World post, you notice that what we have here is really just a big form. Um, we have a form for the title of the post, the content of the post. You have checkboxes for categories, uh, for tags. You can create an expert, excerpt, trackbacks, custom fields. All of this is really just one big form, okay? So this form data gets submitted to a PHP script that stores that data into uh, a database. And if we come and we go to our admin for PHP, uh, go to PHP my admin for our MySQL database that I'm using here. And we go into the WordPress and we go to posts, you can see that we have a number of um, different posts in here and you can see this one for hello world okay and the data gets stored ID of the post the post author the date the content the title the excerpt um, and I don't think they yeah they don't actually store categories in here but there's another table uh, this term relationships that matches it up with a category uh, and so on so all that data that gets submitted from this form gets stored into this database. Now, WordPress has no idea what you're going to put in as the title, okay? But if we come to our themes, <clears throat> and we look at a WordPress theme for a single post, which this is the, the, the this is the code that makes this individual post show up so each one of these individual posts when when uh, clicked on this is the code that makes it show up you notice that we have uh, a number of different code in here but for example we have this function called the title right and this is in the title spot so this function goes in and actually gets the title from uh, WordPress and displays it out so we don't know what it is but we know that the title is what's going to be saved in post title and so we can use PHP to get it even though we have no idea what it is um, same thing for the content if we scroll down here here's the content and we can uh, echo out that content and, uh, and so on and so on with the categories and every little bit of information that gets entered in here uh, and is stored in the background when you create a post all of that stuff gets stored in this database and then can ultimately be echoed out and uh, if we go to the site and we click on a single post then we can see we have our content that is stored in the database right here we have our title and, and so on and so forth okay so that's what PHP allows you to do and I think my personal opinion is when it comes to PHP there's two really broad skills that you never hear anybody talk about and you know in talking about them may sound kind of a little weird but as you work with PHP you're gonna see this and those two skills uh, it has nothing to do with functions it has nothing to do with databases um, you know it all has to do with uh, really um, mentally 
And those two big skills are one, the ability to be a dogged researcher, someone who can look up and find information, find it for themselves, solve their own problems, um, and figure things out on their own. You really need to be able to do that in order to um, work with PHP and work with code in general. And if you you know you're not someone who feels like they can do that right now, it's it's not a big deal because in le learning PHP, it's going to force you to become good at that stuff. Uh, the second thing, and it's kind of what we've alluded to here a little bit, is the ability to mentally abstract, to to not to to put yourself one step or two steps away from the specifics of a situation. Again, be able to write this code in here for this theme without knowing what data is actually going to be able be be implemented or going to be put into this, but still being able to create a theme where you you can deal with abstract data like the title as opposed to the actual specific value of the title. So mental abstraction is another key thing. So anyway, this is what variables, variables are really kind of the core of that because storing information as a variable is what actually physically creates that, that level of ab abstraction to where now you're dealing with the title as opposed to the actual value, the title itself, okay? So that's what variables allow us to do, uh, and that's why they're so powerful, and that's really kind of the core of what PHP is. So here we are back at our script. Um, now let's talk a little bit about, uh, we've talked about variables, let's talk a little bit about some of the naming conventions with those. So first thing is that um, all variables must start with a letter or underscore. So uh, the name of this variable could start like this, uh, it could start how it is now, it could start like this, but it can't start like this. It can't start with a number, it can't start with a special character or anything like that. It has to start with a letter or underscore. PHP variables can only be comprised of alphanumeric characters and underscores. So A through Z, uh, both upper and lower case, and 0 through 9, and the only special character that's allowed is the underscore. And the reason for that is that variables with more than one word should be separated with, with underscores as one option. So if you have a two word variable, you would write it like that. Uh, that's again convention. Or if you don't want to do that, then you can use uh, capitalization like this um, in order to separate multi word. And if you were to do, you know, something like a three word variable it would look like that okay and that just kind of help helps make it easier to read so you can use underscores or capitalization I typically use capitalization but uh, it's it's up to you so that's a little bit about variables that's kind of how they work at some of the conventions you're gonna be working a ton with variables you get to know variables very well very quickly uh, as you go through the course so but a little bit of a primer I uh, hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll talk to you again soon.